Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 448, Immediate Complaints After the Initial Testosterone Pellet Insertion. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moppin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. If you're a woman and you are old enough that you have lost the manufacture of your own testosterone, you've suffered a hit. There are deficits that you are experiencing, which can be ameliorated by replacing your testosterone. But we've been doing this now for long enough, and we do it only through the method of using pellets, testosterone pellets, which are bioidentical replacements of your natural testosterone. But the very first time that that happens for you, if you're a typical female, you may have some reactive concerns. They are temporary, they're short-lived, they only happen the first time, but they are interesting. (laughs) And we talked a little bit about the first of those reactive concerns uh, in our most recent uh, health cast. We talked about the, the sense of hypersexuality. If your sponge has dried up, so that you don't have a libido or a sense of sexual hunger, and it's been a while, and you get that shot of testosterone, those pellets come and and you get that first rush of testosterone, you get a rush of sexual arousal, sexual desire. And some of the the patients that we've had have, have said, oh my gosh, I'm feeling this a lot, and I'm worried about my own moral response. You know, am I going to get after the waiter at the at the country club, or am I going to attack the mailman, or my husband's and complaining they don't. from exhaustion? No, they don't. They absolutely <laughs> and don't. they don't. Which is, I mean, but they're trying to, in a in a humorous way, ask us about: Is this a real problem? Am I making this up? Is and, this going to happen? Will it go away forever? Yeah. And, am I at risk? Am I going to have to change my understanding of who I am sexually mm-hmm. because I have this? And that's not what happens. It's not what happens. You know, the, the hypersexuality, whether you want it to stay or not, doesn't happen <laughs> with testosterone pellets. Yeah, we actually have a number of people that have come in that later and said, can I get that again? Yeah, yeah. it's like little kids on, on a ride. Do it again. Do it again. And I'm like, yeah. I, I can't because it all has all of these initial responses that are unusual are, are because your receptor sites are dried up and they have not had any testosterone in many years, and then we give it testosterone and there's an overreaction. Well, it and that brings us to time. the one we want to talk about today. Yeah, I mean, it we, takes we talked some time about the hypersexuality. Mm-hmm. Now we want to talk about vaginal itching. Right. Because women complain about it. If, they, if they haven't had it and suddenly they have it, it's like, what did you do to me? Right. So so many patients, we warn them and we have it in our consents and everything, but, but oftentimes they'll still call us and say, I think I have a vaginal infection. Did did you do that to me, mm-hmm. basically? So here's what's happening. There's no infection involved. What's happening is blood flow has not been going to the vulva or your bottom, basically around the vagina, and that whole area. Blood flow has been diverted away when testosterone goes away, and even more when estrogen goes away, too. So the whole bottom kind of dries up. If you've had this happen, we call it old lady bottom. So basically everything shrinks and is not sensitive and doesn't have good blood flow. So when you get testosterone, all of a sudden, boom, you've got a lot of blood flow and it's overreacting again. So a lot of blood flow goes to, to the pelvis, to the, to the vagina and to the vulva that's around it. And it kind of swells. And as it does this, it irritates the, uh, the nerves and kind of causes it to itch. This is short-lived, usually a week or two, Cold packs, ice packs, something like that are the only things that work. And you don't have to go to your gynecologist and say, do I have an infection? It's not an infection. It is just a self-regulating, it'll, you'll get over it in a couple of weeks. It's, it basically is not going to cause you any trouble and it is not something you need treatment for. You just have to kind of wait it out. And it never happens again. So if you get a one-two punch and you get the increased libido and then the vaginal itch, yeah, it's like... 
I've gotten so hot now I have to ice myself down. Yeah, they, yeah. It's, it's kind of like that. But, you know, basically some people have other methods. They, you know, they have, <laughs> they have vibrators or they have husbands. So, you know, or partners. So they, they uh, take care of it a different way. But it's still not comfortable. And most yes. women still complain about it. But it goes away. So it's not something bad. So we try to reassure everybody that this is just nature reacting with the receptor sites in that area where you weren't getting blood flow before. Well, and you do tell them ahead of time. You warn them, and, mm -hmm. and there's information in both of our books that talks about mm -hmm. these these things. Uh, but it's kind of, for most people, it's kind of like the the lawyer that comes on at the end of a TV commercial, and they say real quickly all the qualifiers and disqualifiers. <laughs> and yeah. it, This is real information. These things do happen. They may happen to you if they happen. We want you to not overreact. We don't want you to panic or get scared or say, "Oh my gosh, what have you done to me?" Or if your or if your friend sa says, oh, "I went for pellets and all this stuff happened," well, then she'll be happy in about two more weeks because everything good will then occur. She'll feel yeah. better. All of the symptoms she had will be gone, and these things will be gone as well. So. So there's another one. Yes. And and again, it only happens to women. It doesn't happen to all women. It happens to some women. And I, I can tell you, as a male, I, I've never known a male to complain about this happening to, to his woman. Oh, to his woman, true. Yeah. But women mm -hmm. are nervous about the possibility. Well, and their gynecologists don't help. Why? Because Why don't gynecologists help? Because if, if they... if So the next thing is clitoral enlargement. So same thing happens to the clitoris. It gets too much sen sensitivity, too much... It grows a little bit, and it gets more obvious... To the patient. It fleshes out. It, get, it yeah, appears. It be, appears swollen or if they've never been able to see or they haven't been able to see it for years, then they can see it again or feel it again. Okay. So, so, so basically it's something that they worry about. They go to their gynecologist and the gynecologist may not be thinking, oh, testosterone does this for a little while and then st it stops and it goes away. They're thinking what we were taught in gynecology school was an enlarged clitoris may mean an ovarian tumor with testosterone production. That's all they're thinking about. So they freak out and say, oh my God, so you have their to stop checklist, this. So doctor checklist, they've, they've, they've memorized been, alarms. That's it. That alarm that's goes off. That's the alarm. That's when they and stop thinking about it. They say, okay, right. this has got to be and this. Then, and all they can think of is, oh no, because they don't think, oh, testosterone was given. It's an overreaction. It's going to go away. They just think, this is something bad because I was taught in med school 40 years ago that this is something bad. And and it's so rare to have those those the tumors that are in the ovary that cause this, that they probably have never seen it before. So, so is this situation also like the first ones we talked about self-correct mm -hmm. in a matter self -correct. of a couple weeks? They self-correct. Usually it is um, it's a dose-dependent issue. Okay. So uh, if the patient required a lot of testosterone for her other symptoms, sometimes they still have slightly more um, length to their clitoris than they did before. We're talking millimeters. We're not talking... Enough that an ordinary person would notice a difference? I mean, realistically? They, in general, at, you know, I always say to them, to the, my pa female patients, at least your husband can find it. But, you know, <laughs> that's, that's my line. And that's true because when we get older and we have no hormones, it kind of regresses and it goes away underneath the hood and you, it's very hard to even find it. Yeah. So now they're back to 30-something... In, with their hormones, and it's a, it, they usually can feel it or see it one way or another. And so it's it's back. They haven't had this for a long time, so they get kind of weirded out over it. But their husbands don't. In general, their husbands don't. I haven't had anybody say, my husband thought this was weird. They so just think it's weird. I've read and been told that as mm -hmm. women age, one common theme is that for sexual gratification as they age, they need more clitoral stimulation. Right, because Would that not make this a better thing, like yes. a win-win outcome? If, if it were to happen, yeah. and you were of mm -hmm. that age for satisfaction that you needed more of that type of stimulation, wouldn't that be a good thing and not a yeah, scary you thing? Wouldn't, yeah, it would be a good thing. I mean, you don't have men come in after their testosterone and say, oh, my penis is too big. You know, I think this is, this is a something that we've been brainwashed into thinking that this is a terrible thing that you can actually feel or see a clitoris. Well, it's got to be a secret female conversation because I've never heard men talk about this one way or the other. I'm sure they haven't. I'm sure it's a it's a couple discussion. Yeah. But or not a discussion at all. 
I mean, I doubt someone's going to say to their wife, ooh, that was great. You, you, <laughs> you have a larger clitoris. I can find it. You know, they, they don't say that. It's just in, in, the, in the act, it is an ad- advantage to be able right. to stimulate the clitoris and have women respond, a woman respond. So I was so, thinking part of your conversation of warning, mm-hmm. you would present that perspective. This could be a really good benefit that could happen. I, I try to, but if someone's either been told by their gynecologist that it's something terrible, yeah. which is but wrong. C- cancer, it's a tumor. Oh, yeah. yeah, and it's just the, re- the first response of testosterone that's, that's going to get better. It's not going to stay this way in general. If they're very freaked out over it, and it's going to go away. I still may give them estrogen cream, which counteracts the, the reaction or the response of the testosterone. To balance. To balance it. <laughs> and it makes the clitoris decrease in size a little bit. Okay. Faster. Faster. Yeah. So so basically, it's it counteracts the testosterone. That's one of the ways that we can treat it. But it's not something to worry about, and it's not something that's harmful. So there's one more concern that's... Not sexual. We, we, we've <coughs> talked me. about a number of initial responses that they could notice around the issue of sex or sexuality. These are the, the four most common questions, complaints, something that we get between the first insertion and the second. And the next one. And, and that, that one is weight gain. Right. Although the fascinating part about that is even though they may be complaining about an increase in weight, they often are saying, my clothing sizes are changing, and, and I haven't small. lost any weight. I've actually put size, on four pounds. Size, or, yeah, sizes are bigger. The yeah. clothing is bigger. Yeah. But they put on weight. Right. In general, that's what's happening. Basically, what happens is testosterone does to muscles what it did to the um, the uh, female sexual tract. You know, basically, the muscles haven't had testosterone in a long time. Blood flow is going to the muscles more than it has in a long time. They overreact and and they build a lot of muscle in the very first four months. So these muscles are like, they're they're getting bigger. They're growing in terms of laying down more muscle instead of shrinking, which is what happens when you don't have testosterone. And these, these muscles are building and they're using fat to build as their energy. So usually these patients, when they come back, we put them on the body uh, composition machine and they've gained like four pounds of muscle. They've lost four pounds of fat, and they're smaller, but their their weight's either the same or it may have gone up a pound or two. That doesn't mean they're fatter. Mm-hmm. I mean, the goal of weight loss is losing fat, not losing muscle. Well, and the in body measures three things. It measures your muscle density, mm-hmm. your fat density, mm-hmm. and your water weight. And your weight weight. And just your overall weight. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so... With testosterone, your muscles that have begun to shrink and and get lighter mm-hmm. As you flesh age. out again, right? And and that makes because they're dense, they weigh more, right? But there, but uh, <clears throat> by mass, um, a pound of fat is like they they by volume, they, yeah, by volume, mass volume. Yeah, the the um, a pound of fat's like that big, and a pound of muscle's like that big. Right. So if you trade a pound of fat to a pound of muscle, you're shrinking. But, but muscle burns calories. So I'm not heavier. I'm just denser. Yeah, it's yeah. true. People with a lot of muscle weigh more for, for their size. Yeah. So that's why BMIs don't work in real muscly people. My BMI has always been higher than it should be for my weight right. um, or for my size because I have a lot of muscle. So the reason we're having this conversation is that if you are a candidate for testosterone replacement, and you come to Dr. Moffin's practice and you get pellet insertions, we want you to know, if you're female, that these are four things that might happen. We want you to know that they're predictable, they're known, they're safe, and they're temporary. And that if pellets are the answer for the conditions that you have, on the second or third iteration of those pellets, you're not going to have those reactions. They will not reoccur. One of them, the clitoral enlargement, is dose-dependent. We can fluctuate the dose and and make you more comfortable that way if you're uncomfortable at all. Uh, If you understand the dynamics of what's going on, you may make an adjustment and say, well, okay, it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. But if you're worried about it, there are things that can be done. It's a safe, 
bioidentical product that restores your natural testosterone in an on-demand way that allows your body to function the way that it did when you were younger. It allows you to be sexual in the way that you were when you were younger. It allows you to do something about your weight, uh, your body shape, uh, because you have the capacity to do that when you didn't have it, when you didn't make testosterone. So there are positive outcomes that for client education, we're presenting this information so you would know. We want people who take pellets in general, testosterone pellets, to be more comfortable with whoever provides them them for them and not be afraid. This is not something to be afraid be of. Be afraid of, exactly. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.